How do you find the length of the mid-segment of a triangle? In other words, what is the measure of segment EF? In this lesson, you will learn how to prove the triangle mid-segment theorem by using properties of triangle similarity. Let's review. A mid-segment is the point on a segment that cuts the segment into two congruent segments. Point S, point T, and point W are midpoints of their respective sides. This means that segments ST, TW, and WS are mid-segments for triangle PQR. When parallel lines are cut by transversals, we can see that corresponding angles are congruent. This means that angle 1 is congruent to angle 5, angle 2 is congruent to angle 6, angle 3 is congruent to angle 7, and angle 4 is congruent to angle 8. Side angle side triangle similarity is proven when two sides from one triangle form a proportion with two sides from another triangle, while the included angles from each triangle are congruent. In the figure, we can show that there is a proportion that compares two sides from one triangle with the two sides from another triangle. Since 3 ninths and 4 twelfths reduce down to 1 third each, they equal each other, making them a proportion. The included angles are the angles between the sides we use for the proportion. So, if angle B is congruent to angle E, we can prove that the triangles are similar. This means that triangle ABC is similar to triangle DEF. This also means that the corresponding sides between the two triangles are proportional and that the corresponding angles between the two triangles are congruent. Some students jump right into a proof and quickly get stuck. To solve this problem, try working with the model first to see what needs to be done to reach the appropriate conclusion. In working with the model, we will now see what is necessary to prove the triangle mid-segment theorem. We're given that A is the midpoint of segment XY and B is the midpoint of segment YZ. And we are asked to prove that segment AB is parallel to segment XZ and AB equals half the length of XZ. Since we know that A is the midpoint of segment XY, we also know that segment AX is congruent with segment AY. Similarly, segment YB is congruent to segment BZ. For illustrative purposes, I have placed the variable N to represent the segment lengths of AY and AX, and the variable M is used to represent the segment lengths of YB and BZ. To gain a better perspective as to what's happening with the small and large triangles, we will separate them. Notice that the larger triangle gets a side length of 2n for segment xy and a side length of 2m for segment yz due to the fact that each whole side was made up of two segments that had the same lengths of n and m respectively. Let's check the proportionality of the corresponding sides that we have labeled with n's and m's. We see that n over 2n equals m over 2m which equals 1 half. Since these sides made equal fractions, they are proportional. Now notice that angle Y for both triangles came from the same angle in the original figure. Therefore, angle Y in the small triangle is congruent to angle Y in the large triangle. This is the reflexive property since they are really the exact same angle. Since angle Y is between the proportional sides that we have just checked, it is the included angle. Therefore, we have that two sides from each triangle are proportional and that their included angles are congruent. This is enough to prove that the triangle AYB is similar to triangle XYZ by side angle side similarity. Since the triangles are similar, their corresponding angles are congruent. This means that angle A is congruent to angle X. When we put the triangles back together, we see that angle A is not only congruent to angle X, but that they form a pair of corresponding angles. When corresponding angles are congruent, the lines cut by the transversal are parallel with each other. In other words, 
segment AB is parallel to segment XZ. Also, because the triangles are similar, their sides are proportional, which gives us AY over XY equals YB over YZ equals AB over XZ. Substituting in the values of N and M, we get that N over 2N equals M over 2M, which equals AB over XZ, which equals 1 half. This means that AB equals 1 half of XZ. Thus we have proven that segment AB is both parallel to and half the length of segment XZ. Turning this into a two column proof, we get that A is the midpoint of segment XY and B is the midpoint of segment YZ from the given statement. We see that segment XA is congruent to segment AY and segment YB is congruent to segment BZ by the definition of a midpoint. This means that XA is equal to AY and YB equals the BZ by the definition of congruent segments. AY plus AX equals XY and YB plus BZ equals YZ by the segment addition postulate. Now we have that YA plus YA equals XY and YB plus YB equals YZ through the substitution property. We can combine like terms to get 2 times YA equals XY and 2 times YB equals YZ by the distributive property. This means that XY over YA equals 2 and that YZ over YB equals 2 by the division property. So XY over YA equals YZ over YB by the substitution property. Angle Y is congruent to angle Y by the reflexive property. This means that triangle AYB is similar to triangle XYZ by side angle side similarity. Angle YAB is congruent to angle YXZ because corresponding angles between similar triangles are congruent. Segment AB must be parallel to segment XZ by the converse of the corresponding angles postulate that states that if corresponding angles are congruent then the lines cut by the transversal are parallel. XZ over AB equals XY over YA because corresponding sides between similar triangles are proportional. Segment XZ over AB equals 2 by the substitution property. Segment XZ equals 2 times AB by the multiplication property. 1 half XZ equals AB by the division property. In this lesson, you have learned how to prove the triangle bid segment theorem by using the properties of triangle similarity.